Hey there, in this Android Beat, we are going to learn about Handler and Looper, which are crucially important concepts to understand for professional Android developers. Initially, I thought that I will create a presentation and explain how these concepts work under the hood schematically, but then I realized that it will be much better to just create our own custom Handler and Looper, and this way you will understand what they do much, much better. So in this video, we are going to do exactly that. We will create our own looper and our own handler. To kick off our discussion here, I already created this handler and looper screen inside my tutorial Take Your Chance application. It's open source and the link will be attached to the description of this video. So here we have this execute task in a new thread button and whenever I click on it, you will see some local output inside the locket. So thread four, that's the name of the thread that executes the task. And you can read task start at zero. And then this thread counts to three with one second delay between these counts. And then it prints tasks completed. And if I click on this button again, a new thread will be started and the next task will be executed. Task started number one and here it's number zero. Again, one, two, three, and then task number one completed. What's interesting here is that if I click on this button multiple times, then we will have multiple threads running concurrently and multiple tasks executing concurrently in the background. So let's see what's the implementation of this very simple uh, mechanism. So here we have this button and whenever we click on it, execute task in a new thread method will be called. Inside this method, I create and then start a new thread. And inside the thread, I just print task started and then I loop for three times and each time I sleep for one second and then print task number of task and then count and the current count. Very simple, very straightforward implementation. And since this execute task in a new thread method will be called every time we click on this button, a new thread will be created and that's how we get concurrency. That's how we get multiple counts executing concurrently. And in many cases, that's exactly what you want to achieve. But there are cases when that's not the case. There are cases when you want to use just one single thread and basically execute multiple tasks over some period of time on that one single thread. And the best example of that, of course, is the UI main thread inside Android applications. There's just one such thread and you don't want to switch it. You don't want to use other threads. You just want to do everything related to the user interface of your application on that one single thread. So how can we achieve that? To show you how to build this feature, I added additional button to our handler and looper screen, execute task in a new thread, in a looper thread, sorry. And when I click on it, nothing happens. And the reason nothing happens is because internally here, execute task in looper thread does absolutely nothing. And our goal here is to implement this feature. How can we do that? Well, let's just copy paste this code right here. But now we need to do something else. We do want to start this new thread whenever we click on this button, but only if we haven't started it before. And therefore, let's just keep a reference to this thread. So let's call it looper thread because that's the name of this thread. And you'll understand why we call it looper in a moment. So that will be thread nullable and initially it will be null. So what we want to do here is to go here and say the following. If this looper thread equals to null, then we want to basically initialize a new thread here. And then we do want to get back this task, right? So we have this specific task, but instead of submitting it to this extract constructor, when we create and start this thread, we want to enclose this new task in, let's say, runnable object. So this runnable will just contain the code of this task. And then we want to submit this runnable into a special queue that we will define. So let's go back here and private val looper queue. And that will be of time blocking queue of runnables, let's say. And this will be new block linked. What's the name of that? Linked blocking queue. That's the name that I was looking for. And here we can set the capacity of this queue. And let's say that initially the capacity will be 20. Now, how exactly I arrive at this number? That's a very difficult question that's outside the scope of our discussion here. But currently I just set it randomly to 20. There is not much thought behind it. This will suffice for our demonstration here. So now once we have this blocking queue of runnables, we can go here and just put this runnable into this blocking queue. So looper 
Q, put, and then we want to put this runnable into our queue. And once we did that, every time we click on execute task in looper thread, we basically put a new task into this queue. How will these tasks get out of the queue? Well, that's where our looper thread comes into the picture. So first of all, we want to sorry, initialize our looper thread to this new thread. And then we, of course, want to start this thread because if it's not started, it will do absolutely nothing. And inside this thread, what we want to do is create a while loop that will loop forever, basically. And it will just take while current message will be something that this thread takes out of our looper queue dot take and take is a blocking method. So Javadoc says retrieves and removes the head of this queue waiting if necessary until an element becomes available. So this thread looper thread will be blocked until something is available inside our uh, looper queue. And therefore, this thread will basically loop forever and every time take something from this queue. And once we take it, we want to execute this message. So current message, just run. And this way, it will take the messages out of this queue and run them, execute them basically one by one on this one single looper thread. This while loop right here is the reason why all that's called looper. So this uh, thread basically loops through this queue and every time there is a message, it executes it. So that's why it's called looper because we have a loop here. So once we did that, I think this should work. Let's just relaunch our application and see whether it works as we intended to work. Once the application started, we go to this handler looper screen, execute task in a looper thread, and we see that one single task gets executed. And then we execute another one and we can see that it's the same thread, thread four. But what's interesting is what will happen if I click on this button multiple times. And then we see that just one single task is executed, but once it completes, we immediately start executing the next one. So basically this mechanism of adding uh, runnables into our queue and then popping them from the queue one by one and executing on this one single thread works as expected. At this point, we basically have all the main components of looper and handler architecture. We just need to rearrange the source code a little bit so you could see much better where looper and handler come into the picture. So let's refactor the code slightly. Currently, I just have this queue right inside my fragment. And instead of doing that, let's just create here, let's say a new inner class and call it private class, call it my looper, for example. And I will just move this looper thread and looper queue into my looper. And here I will create a new function. Let's call it prepare. And this function should be called when my looper is instantiated. And its functionality will be exactly that. So basically, start this new thread if the current looper thread is null. And of course, we need another function. And let's call it quit. And this function should stop this looper thread. Basically, we want to break out of this while loop and let this looper thread to die. So how can we do that? Well, in order to do that, we need a special runnable. So private val, call it poison, for example. And this will be a new runnable. And this runnable won't have any code inside of it. We just want it to be there. And basically, when we call this quit function, we want to take our looper queue and put this poison into it. And if we take a message from this queue and discover that this current message is equals to poison, basically reference equality, then it means that we don't need to run this message. Instead, we want to break out of this while loop. And basically, this will cause this looper thread to die. Now we have a decision to make whether we want to set this uh, looper thread to be null and therefore allow for another prepare to be called. Or alternatively, we can make sure that prepare will be called just once. And I think the first, the second sorry, approach, making sure that prepare will be called just once is what the actual looper class uses. And therefore we say that if looper thread is not equal to now, then we want to uh, throw some exception from here, shouldn't be called more than once. And then this entire function 
basically it just assumes that it will be called just once. If I'm not mistaken, the real looper class works exactly in this manner. So we have this uh, my looper class, and now we of course want to instantiate this my looper private uh, val my <laughs> looper equals new my uh, looper. And you know what? I think we will make it var, and then we will make it of type my looper nullable, and then just let's make it now and when we get uh, here basically to execute task in looper thread you know what let's make it override methods on start and of course override methods on stop so let's say we want to initialize this uh, looper my looper equals new my looper and then uh, my looper sorry like this prepare and here we want to say my looper quit right so in on start we initialize our looper and in on stop we make uh, this looper basically quit and therefore execute task in looper thread all we want to do is to submit this message to my looper and for that we'll do my looper in queue so in queue that's a difficult term message and then let's just pass in this specific uh, runnable and of course, we will need to add this NQ message function. And I think I still made a mistake. NQ message like that. And here, of course, we want to take the looper queue and put this specific runnable into it. So now we have what? We have this my looper class that internally wraps this looper thread. And this thread basically loops through all these messages that we NQ using this NQ message. Uh, method and externally what we see is that we just instantiate this looper prepare it and quit it whenever we don't need it and then we just send it these messages and of course you want to do it like that so i think this should work let's just make sure that our application works just like before go to handler and looper open our locket execute task in a looper thread and of course we see this thread number four executing these tasks one by one and therefore our looper my looper class works as expected all right so now we have this my looper class and we use it to enqueue messages and it works very similar to the real thing in android framework of course our custom my looper class is very simple much simpler than the real looper but hopefully you get the idea of what the real looper does using this simplified example and now the question becomes so okay where does handler come into the picture and the answer is that handler is actually a very thin wrapper around my looper and the reason we need handler is to just expose a little bit more convenient interface than uh, looper does in android framework so let's refactor this looper to using looper and handler so let's create another private class here so let's say private class and that will be my handler it will uh, get an instance of looper of type my looper and this handler will have function that's called post and we will post runnable to this function and of course internally we will just delegate this runnable to underlying looper class my looper instance but actually the real looper it does not expose in queue message uh, function instead it just exposes this looper queue so let's just expose this looper queue directly and instead of using this message in queue message we will just go to this uh, looper get its queue and then put this runnable into it and that's pretty much it for our simplified handler so now instead of using my looper here we will <laughs> switch to using my handler of type my handler initially null and the rest is pretty much the same so here we will do my handler and then post very similar interface to the real handler but here in on start instead of initializing my looper we will initialize my handler with a um, new instance of my looper of course and in the real android application often case we will use get main looper static method because we will want to post messages to the ui thread but here we just use our own custom looper which will create a new background thread under the hood you cannot access the ui thread without using 
the proper Android looper in order to get to it. So here we will just make sure, for example, that our handler, whenever we instantiate it, already uh, just let's go to init and so looper prepare. So the handler will automatically prepare the looper and this looper will never stop. Now, when I look at it, I realize that I do need to somehow shut down this looper, let's say in on stop. Otherwise this thread, the internal thread will <laughs> still be alive after this fragment is destroyed. And after we lose all references to this my handler object, and this will constitute a memory lake. So we do want to have a mean to stop the internal thread. And in order to do that, we need to keep a reference to this my looper, but I will do something dirty and I will just uh, create a new method on this handler and call it quit uh, looper. And I don't think that the real handler actually has this method. In order to stop this thread, you will need to have reference um, to some other object. But here, since we create our custom handler, I give myself the freedom to add to its interface. So quit looper will just call quit on this looper. And this way we will create a new handler when on start is called and we'll quit this uh, handler whenever on stop is called. So let's just make sure that everything works and actually test this on start on stop mechanism. Go to handler and looper, click on execute task in looper thread. And we see that the task is being executed. We can add several more tasks and then send the application to the background. And we see that the tasks are still executed here and that's totally fine because we want to drain the queue of um, these messages before we shut down the thread but then at some point when all the valid messages have been drained and the looper thread arrives at our poison data right poison runnable then it will shut down and therefore this processing stopped and actually we can even make sure that this thread terminates by basically putting my logger information and then let's say looper thread terminates and then we run the application back to handler and looper. Let's submit two tasks and then send the application to the background. And we see that these tasks are executed. And after the second task gets completed, then we see looper thread terminates. And that's exactly the behavior that we wanted to achieve. All in all, these are handler and looper classes. Of course, the real classes are more complex than the simple examples that I built here in several minutes, but the general idea is the same. Looper is basically the object that is responsible for maintaining this queue of messages. And there is some thread that drains this queue of messages and looper just manages which messages go into this queue and some additional logic. And then we have handler, which is a very thin wrapper around looper that just exposes a little bit different interface, adds some very special capabilities, but generally speaking, handler is not that much of an interest. Looper is the main working horse in all Android applications. I hope that this demonstration clarified for you what handler and looper do in Android applications. And with that, I will see you next time. Goodbye.